Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to In Between here with your host, Grace Kipasa. Thank you for being with us throughout the season three. I'm so excited to have you guys back again. Make sure that you're following us in all of our social media platforms. We're on Instagram, we are on Facebook, we are on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, 1WBN. Thank you for being with us. But today our show is entitled, My Childhood was not my fault. I have a very special young woman here with me. I've known her personally for a very long time and she's here to share her story, her testimony that is entitled to this title that I've called My Childhood Is Not My Fault. And the goal of this show is to reach out to anyone out there who is going through any type of difficulty or had a difficult past or childhood to be able to know that you are not alone in this show. But with no further ado, we're gonna go ahead and enter into the amazing stuff that happens in in between. And we are here to talk with Sarah. Yes. How are you, Sarah? I'm good, how are you? I'm good, thank you so much for coming to our show. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to have you here. <laughs> I've known you, I would say, all of my life. Right. Because we are related, we yes. are family. Um, but I thought that it was very important for you to come on this show and be able to share your story. And the reason why I entitled it My Childhood is not my fault, because as children, a lot of times we are innocent when it comes to a lot of things that can happen. True. So I wanna just go ahead and develop that and talk about that and see, we not know who is watching out there that could be touched by your story or even my story. True. And this is why we like to talk in between, about in between moments in life. All right. So thank you for being here, Sarah. So if you can introduce yourself to everybody who's watching. Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Mawe Shidembeza, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> so one of the things that people don't know, Sarah, is that you have an absolutely, absolutely beautiful voice. That's true. They don't. They don't. Yeah. <laughs> We've heard you sing in so many different mm -hmm. events. We've mm -hmm. heard you, I've heard you sing in churches before. Where did this come from? Was it a, has it always been a passion of yours mm -hmm. or did you just kind of sang one day and someone's like, oh, you have a beautiful voice. <laughs> How did that come about? Actually, um, I would say that me singing is my gift. Mm -hmm. It's been given to me, I think just like being here on earth, I was <laughs> born and it was one of those gifts that God gave me. Yeah. Um, I've been singing since I was like five, six years old back yeah. in Africa yeah. and it just never left wow mm -hmm. and you just kind of brought it onto yourself yes mm. you have a YouTube channel I do so what do you talk about in your YouTube channel in my YouTube channel I talk about everything that has to do with a woman mm -hmm. um, whether it's difficulties sometimes just like uh, me and my son and mm -hmm. how to how, how to better in your relationship as a mom teaching your child mm -hmm. because my son is two years old but he can read okay. and that took some time right. and sometimes we'll talk about natural hair mm -hmm. other times we'll talk about just life and all the circumstances we've been through like my testimonies mm -hmm. and we just share that those stories mm -hmm. how has been how has raising your son been for you compared before we even go in details about your childhood raising your son how has it been for you knowing that what you've been through what are some things you swore to yourself that I just couldn't imagine if my son would ever go through this you know, honestly, I never actually looked at it or even thought of that. Okay. Um, my son came and he was like a healer for me, if I may say. Not okay. to say that he's replacing Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. but he, he was like an antidote for me. Mm -hmm. I needed him. Yeah. He came and he, he, he kind of covers some kind of pain and hurt and other things you've been through through life. Yes. Um, becoming a mother, I always say, is like one of my... Um, it's a blessing mm -hmm. that I count each and every single day, if nothing else, because he just makes me happy. Or yeah. I don't want to say he makes me happy, but he contributes yes, to my happy. daily happiness. Yes, yeah. I, I never compare my childhood to his because I already know it's going to be different. Absolutely. I never even question it. Absolutely. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Uh, let's go into this whole childhood thing. Um, what word will you describe your upbringing? If there's a word that you have to attest to it, 
what way would you describe your upbringing? Rough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rough. Yes. Tell us a little bit about it. Mm. Um, let's start with when you first came to the United States. Mm -hmm. Or even if there's some things in Africa to hear. What are some things that you can talk about your upbringing that goes with the subject of it wasn't your fault? Well, I definitely, I left my country, I'm from Democratic Republic of Congo, mm -hmm. and I left my country in 1997 because mm -hmm. there was war. Mm -hmm. I would say that wasn't my fault because mm -hmm. I'd rather stay home with my mom mm -hmm. than move over here with other family members that I'm going to meet, you know, new for the very first time. Right. That was one thing. Mm -hmm. um, starting school in America was difficult mm -hmm. because I'm dark, I'm chocolate guys, and you know, <laughs> they make fun of us because <laughs> it's not cool to be chocolate no. until you grow up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but when you're a kid, you don't know that. Yeah. So you go through that process yeah. and we're Africans, so they don't believe in depression or any of those things, yeah. but you're going through that yeah. stuff at school. Right. Um, that was very di different and difficult, the transition. Mm -hmm. But after that, it was just like a difficult time between my, my, I stayed with my aunts here yeah. and it was just difficult um, growing up with in America, but in an African way, if yes. I may say. Yes. Yeah. That was difficult. Okay. Growing up in America in an African way. Right. It was so like, mm -hmm. this part, we're gonna, I'm going to ask you a couple of these questions. What happened to you when you were a child here in America while you were living in your whole household with your aunt? When I was living with my family, it was difficult because at one point I got tagged that I'm a... a um, I, like a sorcerer or a witchcraft a person. Witch. A, a witch. A witch. Mm -hmm. There it goes. And... Y'all, this like demolished my whole life before I even knew it. It's when I got older that then I realized like, oh, my life is, you know, it's just been erased. Mm -hmm. But until then, literally that's what happens. Whenever they call you a witch in the African community, mm -hmm. like your whole life is over. Mm -hmm. I would go to church, I'm like 11, I would go to church. And if I sat down in one like bench, mm -hmm. everybody will get up oh, wow. and leave. Um, I understand, but I don't understand. Right. Um, so I don't understand why we got to go to this church. What is this God about? Why I have to be here? Because if this is what God is about, I don't want to partake exactly. in this. So there's that. Sometimes, you know, you have um, the children ministry at church. Mm -hmm. So if I have some candy, other kids might come around and be like, oh, Sarah, can I have some candy? Mm -hmm. I'm like, sure. I give them the candy and their their parents see that I gave their their child the candy. They're like, give me that. You know, right. and me in the corner of my eye, I see the outcome and you're hurt. Right. But who do you run to? Who do you talk to? Who right. do you confide in? Right. Because it's your own family members who are saying that you are a, a witch. witch. Right. And this is what you grew up in. Right. And um, this entitlement that they put on an 11 year old mm -hmm. little girl mm -hmm. came from church. Mm -hmm. So you were hurt in church. Right. But what surprised me is 20 years later, I saw you singing in church. Mm. What happened for you to get there? Ooh, a lot. How mm. did you pull yourself from being that 11-year-old girl mm -hmm. who was pointed to be a witch, mm -hmm. who will go to church and sit down and people run away because mm -hmm. they say she's a witch? Right. And then 20, 10 years later, or 10 somewhat years later, you end up singing mm. in church. Mm. How does that happen? I feel like through singing, um, I found my breakthrough mm -hmm. and no matter how tough it was, I would end up writing songs. Mm -hmm. I remember my first song ever I wrote, I was like maybe like 10 and I would be singing, I want to go up, 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 up <laughs> to the sky, sky, sky. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go down, 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 Aww. down, 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 <laughs> down, down. And I feel like I hear that song now mm -hmm. and it's still a testimony of my life. Yeah. Like through all of that mm -hmm. stuff, all I wanted to do was rise above it. Yeah. And I didn't want to go down with it yeah um i feel like through all the steps of my life no matter how tough it was in between i would just sing mm -hmm. i will sing or i write a song about that particular situation and how it made me feel mm -hmm. unfortunately i don't remember all the songs i've written yes. but i feel like this is what kept me going from one point to another from this level to the next level um and I really feel like that was the token to my, my, my freedom outside of this, you know, bubble space. And what am I singing? Because I, I, I understand some people are, are going to be asking, well, what, what songs is she singing? It's praise. It's mm -hmm. worship. 
made up for my mind. Okay. Nothing that I've heard or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just painful because I do consider God as my daddy. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you just go raw in and mm -hmm. say, hey, Papa, it hurts here yeah. and it hurts there. Yeah. And it really, really hurts in there yeah. because who else will hear my cry? Yeah. Who else will come for my rescue? Yeah. So you go to church. Mm -hmm. People run away. Oh. They call you a witch. Right. And then there was a point in your life that... Family members run away. Family members run away. Mm -hmm. You were being accused of things that you were, you had no clue. Right. God's sakes, you were 11 right. years old. Right. And after that, you found yourself in a foster care. Right. I do... I'm so, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I am sorry for apologizing. Uh, uh, breaking through there no, but I wanted to add something in there mm. there is a point as I'm going through all this stuff whatever they're accusing me of maybe I didn't agree mm. but you get to a point where you're just like yes yes I am a witch. oh hey did you do that yes yes hey over there da 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 I had a dream this and this yes yes that me too that me too anything everybody my answer is yes, yes. <laughs> because you're being is accused of right you don't understand mm -hmm. so they say Sarah you're the one that hurt my child because you're a witch and right. you say yes and they mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. uh, you go to school you hurt people you whatever. hurt people mm -hmm. you just say you're a witch and you say yes because you didn't understand right. now so, i'm just tired and if they're telling you that this is what you are then mm -hmm. this is what you are right and um just to touch on it yeah the the, the whole the reason why my family tagged me member at a particular time tagged me as a witch is because I was having dreams mm -hmm. um, and when I wake up I would tell them about the dreams mm -hmm. but the dreams were about before my time yeah. I wasn't born yet yeah. there's no way I would know the information yeah. but I would tell them and it wasn't until like I started going to this church I don't know if I should mention you shouldn't. okay and um, they, they the man of God prayed for me mm -hmm. and I told him through my delivery process mm -hmm. I was like this is what I went through this is what they said what is that because mm -hmm. he was a prophet mm -hmm. and he said oh you're one of us so all along I'm a prophetess as of a the child, Lord as a child and I can see stuff but People because of lack of understanding and me mm -hmm. myself I don't know whatever you title it I believe you I'm just a kid I'm yeah. supposed to believe you wow. I'm supposed to trust you wow. so because obviously I'm not no supernatural person for me to know information before my time right through that whole process i tell you till today i i i fight to i don't want to say i fight to but i no longer have those vivid um visions anymore right. it was taken away from you because you are being told that this is witchcraft but without knowing this is a prophetic gift exactly that's why you were seeing things before that you weren't even at the time that these things were happening. Right. And them who are older and more mature in spirit, spirituality, they're supposed to take that information and go pray. But rather, since I'm a witch, they're scared and it brings fear. Mm -hmm. And then there's this like, okay, she's our family member, but there's this like, you know what I'm saying, detachment. Mm -hmm. Can't get too close because now they're scared mm -hmm. rather than, you know, embracing the gift. They didn't know either, though. So we, Right. They didn't know better. Yeah. We don't blame them no, because they did no, not know better. No. So if I'm doing this, it's got to be a gift. Yeah, right. But because of their lack of knowledge. They thought that it was witchcraft. Exactly. And you're an 11-year-old girl. So you're seeing these dreams mm -hmm. and, and you're telling it to your family member. Right. And they're like, whoa, you weren't there when right. this was happening. Mm -hmm. So they say, oh, no, she's a witch. She's a witch. Right. And you went through this for how long? Ooh, I would say probably between like early 10 all the way to the age of 14 but that only happened it only stopped at 14 mm -hmm. because i really feel like god removed me from mm -hmm. the community mm -hmm. and put me in a different community which yes. was so needed so we're gonna get to there mm -hmm. before we take this quick break you came in the united states to live with your family mm -hmm. and you came at the age of 10. no right? i was seven turning eight seven turning eight mm -hmm. you live with your family mm -hmm. people who are supposed to love you and care for you right you get titled in the community as a witch right as a reason for why things are not going so well right and then after that you lives. end up in foster care right and before we talk about this sarah we'll be right back we are here with sarah talking about foster care how she ended up in foster care mm -hmm. How the community entitled an 11 year old girl as a witch without understanding what was going on. We'll be right back. One Word TV, let your light shine.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am still here with Sarah, and we are still talking about my childhood was not my fault. Mm -hmm. So, Sarah, before we went on break, we talked about the fact that you came to stay with family mm -hmm. who are Congolese from the same country as you, mm -hmm. their family to you. And at the age of 14, like you say, the Lord removed you, and you ended up in foster care. What happened to you while you were in foster care? So, um... Basically, whenever you're not, whenever home is not home, mm -hmm. so you end up finding psychologically, it's even proven, you end up trying to find as a child home somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So some people enter gangs or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, life just kind of goes way wider. Mm -hmm. So through that process, I ended up going to juvenile centers a lot. Mm -hmm. So one of these days I went to a juvenile center and my aunt was mm -hmm. supposed to come and pick me up. Mm -hmm. Instead of coming to pick me up, she came with my other sibling. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had like clothes for me mm -hmm. and it was like, hey, my probation officer is telling me um, you're not going home. Mm -hmm. And my aunt's like, you can come home when you're f uh, when you're 18. At this time, I'm like 14. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that whenever you're 18, they can literally shut the door in the f in your face because mm -hmm. you don't they don't have to let you in their home. Yeah. And nor do you have to go back home at age 18. Right. right. You can, you're an adult. You're free, right? But I didn't know that at right. that time. So I'm thinking, OK, I'm going to go. I'm going to be good. I'm going to do good. Yeah. And then when I'm 18, I can come home yeah. which home oh, you know wow. what I'm saying wow. but I didn't realize all that until right. later so that day they ended up putting me like in a correctional uh, uh, center mm -hmm. all the way in San Antonio we mm -hmm. live here in the Dallas uh, DFW area around this time mm -hmm. but uh, I was sent to San Antonio right. and I was there for maybe like six months it was mm -hmm. difficult for me mm -hmm. because I feel like the word depression I learned it there yeah. you met other young um, young ladies who were going through like stuff yeah um i didn't even know people cut on themselves and there was oh, all this wow. stuff going on until i, I was there i was right. like wow right. okay um from that point on i'm like okay fine i've been here for almost a year now mm -hmm. um, i'm gonna go back home mm -hmm. and i wasn't still allowed to go back home my my aunt was like nope and so that's how i ended up now being a state of the uh ward of the state rather years old mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not as if you were in gangs. Mm -mm. It's not as if you were pregnant. No. It's not as if you were skipping school. Well, well to be honest. Well, <laughs> the, I mean, like I'm saying, like the reason for why you even started skipping school was because of what you were going through at home. Right. But you weren't a delinquent. No. You were a young girl mm -hmm. who was seeing visions mm -hmm. and was titled a witch right and because you were being called a witch mm -hmm. you started to act out right out of that exactly and that's what ended you up over there right because most of the kids that are over there just like you said they cut themselves right they're in drugs they're right. in alcohol right it's intense you, what brought you there is that community mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. entitled you a witch right and, as a young little girl exactly mm -hmm. and and every time i go to these different places mm -hmm. the adults will always say what are you doing here even when i was in the juvenile center yeah. the the staff members would always ask me what are you doing here you don't belong here you don't sound like it you don't and i'm just like I'm here though. Um, I made a promise to myself the last time I was in the juvenile center that I cannot be here because I met this young lady that was in there. She was pregnant. She was 17. She was in there because she tried to poison her mom. She tried to do that because her mom was trying to hurt the baby. Oh. So I was like, whoa, this happens. There's all of this going on. And when I speak, they hear so much wisdom coming from me, which I'm not trying to like toot my own horn because it's a gift. I didn't, you know, do it by myself. Mm -hmm. um, same thing happened there, there at the juvenile center. What, what, what are you doing here? When I was at the correctional office in San Antonio, the staff member would say the same thing when they hear me talk. What are you doing here? So you can hear like somehow in some way you're not supposed to be in these places, but yet you are. Um, wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what were you thinking, Sarah? 14. Mm -hmm. What were you, what was coming to your mind? God, what did I do? Or what's going on mm. how do you leave africa mm -hmm. to come and end up in a correctional mm. uh, center mm -hmm. as a 17 year old in a new family mm. how does 14. how were you what were you feeling um i i kind of just felt abandoned okay right like okay I can't be the worst kid in this world. So I, I'm meeting other kids who are worse and they're out here. Their families come visit them. Mind you, all these places I'm going, I'm, I'm not getting no visitation. I didn't see my family until I was in, uh, until I was a ward of the state or as you call foster care or a group home. Yeah. That's whenever, you know, family members started showing their face here and there, but I didn't really care, you yeah. know, because it's like I hadn't already lived this life without you, you know, so what's the point? Okay. Um, 
but I really just felt abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I would like take pictures of myself because I lost my dad when I was like six months. Okay. So I didn't meet him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would take pictures and I catch myself talking to this man I've never met. Like, hey, dad, I'm grown now. If you were here, I would never be like this because mm -hmm. it's the lack of a father in a girl's life. It really destroys the girl. Yeah. Um, if it's not the father, but some kind of fatherly figure. Right. Right. But yeah. without that, I'm over here looking for love. Anybody love me. I'm worth it. Right. Uh, but no one to be found. Yeah. So to not have a father figure as a young woman, yeah. it really affects you. Just like a young boy to not have a mother figure. He's going to make some wrong choices in the Jennifer's and Jessica's he's going to pick in his life. Exactly. And so that played a big role in my life. I'm looking at my picture and I'm talking to this man I've never seen. I'm yeah. like, Dad, look, look, look at me. I'm a grown woman. And if you were here, I would never be in this home because my father, he was a he was a professor back yeah. in his time. Yeah. And so we weren't poor until he passed. Right. Everything just completely changed. Right. And just growing here without him, I felt like a. Uh, People can treat me anyhow because I'm fatherless. Exactly. Yeah. People can treat you anyhow because you're fatherless. Right. And I'm sorry that I'm getting emotional because I find myself in the same situation as you were. I felt as if there's a certain security mm -hmm. that gets lifted mm -hmm. off of you mm -hmm. once you lose a father. Exactly. But you didn't never even met him. Right. You don't even know what he looks like. Mm -hmm. And then you're <laughs> giving in the hands of family. Mm -hmm. And family's supposed to protect you. Exactly. But you were abandoned. Mm -hmm. And you were given to the state. Mm. And you were passed around in group homes. Right. But you were given to a family that took care of you. How was that experience with that new family? So um, in the group homes, because um, it, it wasn't foster care, I do want to care, uh, correct that, yeah. it's a group home. Yeah. So in the group home, they can now adopt you and then you live with the family. Okay. You become like one of their, their okay. own. Okay. But I could never be adopted because I wasn't in the... I, it's not like I didn't have family, okay. right? So yeah. I had a family, but I'm in here because I'm a ward of the state. So the government mm -hmm. plays a role as my parents. Okay. Yeah. So in the group home, there's maybe like eight of us girls mm -hmm. um, and like a couple that, a married couple that p portrays the idea of father and dad, yeah. but they can't ever love you and give you the um, attention yeah. because it's work. Yeah. It's their job. So yeah. you can't get that, you know. Uh, they're real, getting paid exactly to look over you exactly they're not doing it because they want to this is their job well the, even if they're getting paid they're not getting paid that much so mm. a portion of it is because it's passion right they're not getting paid that much okay, okay. um so but still because it's work for the state you they can't get all emotion in all heart in okay yeah so um it was a transition i was there and um out of the eight kids, some kids will have like tantrums. Mm -hmm. An eight-year-old kid will have tantrums, so we have to send her to the cuckoo home, <laughs> right, where they tie you up, they tie her up and give her a shot just for her to calm down because oh, of wow. whatever issue she's coming from wow. at her home. Oh, wow. I was like the most sound person there. Yeah. That's why they too would ask me, what are you doing here? Um, but at the end of the day, I was there, and God knew why I was there. Um, I was the only one that ended up graduating from the group home. I went to high school and I finished. Yeah. And of course, once you're 18, the state kind of like, you know, shoot, shoot. Okay, okay. go out there. Yeah. This is a problem, I feel like, because mm. the kids would just go back to their families. Yeah. The family could be the crackhead mom, yeah. the drug addict dad, okay. you know, the uncle who's an abuser. Yeah. That's what they're going back to. Or I don't in your think case, it's a, good idea. And, a family mm -hmm. that calls you a witch. Right. You have to go back to them. Exactly. Okay. At this point, um, whenever I'm going back to my family, um, I'm moving back with one of my siblings. Mm -hmm. Um, they love me, mm -hmm. but you can still sense like there's this like, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I love you, but what if you really are? Mm -hmm. uh, I love you, but I don't want to leave you in the house by yourself because what if you do something to my food? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like this, they're not sure mm -hmm. uh, about how to love you. Yeah. I didn't blame them. I think I pretty much just kind of live live and pass through. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You start mm -hmm. smoking and you just like, forget it. At one point there, you become super Americanized because it's anything is better than being African. Exactly. Yeah. So. Anything is better than being African. Yeah, at that because moment. Because at this point, you just don't know what else to do. Right. But they didn't know better either. No, they, they didn't. They were also young. Right. They were told to believe that mm -hmm. this is what you are mm -hmm. because they were just told to believe it. Mm -hmm. This is what church said. This yes. is what a pastor said. This yeah. is what somebody said. And who am I to question the pastor? Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Because you're a witch. Right. So if a pastor says you're a witch, then yes. you are. Mm -hmm. And then... Oh. 
Go ahead. I, I, I wanted to mention this story because it's like a, a print on my mind. I remember one time uh, a pastor came to our home when I used to, you know, live with my family still. Mm -hmm. And guys, whenever I mention living with my family, I left Africa. I left my mom. I left my grandmother. So these are like other siblings in my yeah. family. Okay. Um, I remember they came. The, uh, the pastor came and he was like, today, Sarah, we're going to pray for you to die because you don't want to change your ways. I'm sitting there like, I think I always laugh about this because it's funny and it's not funny. <laughs> because I'm thinking like, so God, you're really, you wrote, you sat there in the heavenly places and was like, Sarah, you're going to live life. You're not going to do anything. And when you get here, I'm going to cut that, you know, life support off. Wow. And uh, so they, they had me in a circle as in I had to uh, kneel on my knees. And it was like this family member, this family member, and this family member plus the pastor. Mm -hmm. And so they're supposed to come to an agreement. Each person had to agree or else the whatever he's wanting to do won't work. Right. So they asked, you know, one of my aunts, hey, do you agree with this prayer? The aunt said yes. They asked another aunt, hey, do you agree with this prayer? They said yes. Then they asked my sibling. This mm -hmm. is a blessed sibling. And though like she didn't know mm -hmm. what was going on she knew that I was her sister and mm -hmm. whatever they're about to do is not right. You're mm -hmm. not about to hurt my sister. Right. right? Though right. she was scared too and confused. Right. And because of her, mm -hmm. the, the little prayer didn't go through. Right. Yeah. So Cause she's like, I'm not going to agree to this. Yeah. Cause we're, we're all agreeing for you to die. Right. Because you don't want to change your ways. And mm -hmm. I'm asking God, how do I change something? I don't know. I have, or that I don't have, because if I did, I'd be blowing up all of y'all because y'all <laughs> just, <laughs> Yes, if I really was the witch, like, I don't know what they do. Like, why are you guys still alive right now? Wow. <laughs> wow. But in their case, it would be like, because God is covering me, right? Right. Right. But you serve God, but <laughs> this God cannot deliver me. Right. He cannot save me. Mm, that was the He'd pain. He'd rather kill me. That was the pain. Wow. And I always wonder, like, so God, where was I going to go? They're probably going to put me, you know, those Nigerian movies, they put people in a bottle. And you're like, oh, my God, help me. <laughs> You know what? I, the beauty about this is that when you sit here, you're talking about this. I'm getting emotional. But what I love is that you're laughing through it. And time heals. Time heals. Jesus, too. Yes. And you're laughing through it because it happened. Mm -hmm. It wasn't your fault. Mm -hmm. And God was able to make it a laughter because this is what the bible says mm -hmm. he will make he will you will laugh at your enemies or mm -hmm. you're la you're, you'll become your stepping stool mm -hmm. what i love about this is the fact that you're laughing through it which is which is making it seem as if like you forgave did you forgive my goodness I did. At this point, yes, I have forgiven. Mm -hmm. But before this point, yeah. there's so many times I was like, I forgive them. And then when I maybe run across one of them at the grocery store yeah. and they'll say something like, oh, how's life? Did you did you did you change that your evil ways? And I'd be so pissed and ready. to, <laughs> And then, you know, right there and then that you didn't forgive. Yeah, right? right. Then you got to go back, go through it again. I remember one time I, I have a I have a male best friend and I also have a female best friend. Right. So my male best friend invited me over and he's like, hey, I'm waiting for you when you get off work we're gonna eat together and just chill I get over there one of my family one of my aunts is mm -hmm. over there and I'm like you know what God I'm gonna take this opportunity to just go free myself I'm gonna go and apologize to her for whatever I've done in my childhood yeah. and tell her too that I forgive her for whatever she's done in my in my life that I felt like you know I was affected by you negatively because of this and that mm -hmm. worst idea the worst idea but yeah. in my head at that point i thought it was great yeah. i go over there and i'm like hey auntie um i just want to take this time mind you to congolese event yeah. so there's all these people as soon as i walk up to my my my, my aunt I, everybody's looking like mm, what's about what's to happen? happen yeah oh my gosh she didn't yeah. over there and so i was like auntie i just want to take this time to say hey i'm sorry for whatever troubles i gave you coming up i know i wasn't like an easy child you know i did skip school because i'd rather be anywhere than come home mm -hmm. you know um so i apologize for all of that and uh, i just want to let you know that me too i forgive you for mm -hmm. all the stuff that you've done that i felt that it hurt me and affected me in not such a positive way this is her response hmm what did I do to you? Have I ever done anything to you? You should go pray about that. You know, you need to change your ways. Don't come over here and, and apologizing just for what you did as a kid. Apologize for you destroyed my marriage and da 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 and all this stuff. And I was just like, 
the anger and the rage <laughs> comes back again. You get up humbly and you walk out. You just leave. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. And all of this, you were not even 20 yet. No, at that point, I think I was maybe, uh, maybe 19, 20 at so, that time. Yeah, you've been through all these trials and tribulations. You weren't even in your 25 years old. Oh, no. Not no. yet. Mm -mm. But, Sarah, before this, we could talk about this all day. Right. And I'm trying to keep my makeup on. Like I keep telling <laughs> you, every time we take breaks, I'm trying to keep my makeup on. Um, how did God, how did you find yourself back to the per person who you probably would have thought that he abandoned me? Mm -hmm. Because they're talking about God, but if he can save them, what can he save me? Mm. I'm sure you felt like that somehow. When did this happen when you transitioned over? Because we can talk about all the terrible, this, just terrifying things that happened to you as a child. But it's, it's not to put blame. We're mm -hmm. not blaming the families. We no. forgave them. We are okay. We're just explaining what happened. Right. But we also want to know, when did Jesus step in? Mm -hmm. Because he does. But before we go into there, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. And we're going to hear from Sarah herself. As I pat my makeup off and wash my tears away, we'll be right back. And we are back here on In Between, ladies and gentlemen. We're still talking about my childhood was not my fault. Mm -hmm. I know we talked about, Sarah, what happened in your childhood. Mm -hmm. Like I said before we went on break, it's not to accuse anyone. Right. It's not to demonize anybody. Oh, no. It's mm -mm. to give a, t a story, a testimony. Exactly. Now we're at the part of the testimony where I asked you, what happened when Jesus stepped in? Because you sing at church. I do. You serve the Lord. Yes. You proclaim that he's your God. Most definitely. That means that something happened. Mm -hmm. And what happened whenever he stepped in? When did it happen? How, that day, what was it? What was the story? Um, I would say it didn't happen immediately. Okay. It was a process. Okay. And it's still, I'm still going through the process. Okay. But they say when Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ comes in your life, your mm -hmm. life can't be the same. Right. So here I am, mm -hmm. many years later, mm -hmm. I'm married mm -hmm. to an African man. <laughs> <laughs> Which I what never a, saw, right? Yeah, that is, that is a cliche, yeah. yeah. Don't in Africa. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have a son. We actually have two sons yes. together. And um, I go to school. Yes. And I'm going to school to become a social worker so that I can give back to where I'm coming from. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, at the end of the day, the only thing I can say that helped me get here is continue worshiping and praising him. Yes. Even if you're not praying, you got to keep praising and worshiping your way through. Yeah. Um, this is almost like... Um, battery charge for all God's children yeah. to worship and praise him. Yeah. Um, and if I can, if you allow me, sure. I just want to share a little, you know, something uh, to kind of praise God Go for this opportunity. And Go I would ahead. just say, um, Lord, if I found favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. I'll cross the hottest desert. I'll travel near or far for your glory i will do everything just to see you to do those mighty wonderful things in my life yes. i want to be where you are yes you know, because joy is where he is. Yes. My deliverance was where God was. Everything I needed was where he is. And so this is the part where I believe Jesus, where he says, seek for me first. Right. He says, right. seek for me first. And all your heart desires is right there tagging behind you. Yes. But you have to do it the right way. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's an order for everything. You're right. 
And then you decided to come back to church. Yes. And you decided to serve God. Yes. Did you realize that he allowed this to happen for a purpose? Not at that time. Now, mm -hmm. yes. But back then you didn't. No. But now you truly believe it. Yes. Because now you hold a, a, a big testimony. Right. That, that cannot even fit the 30 or 45 minutes of the show that we are doing. No. So, Sarah, if there was a young woman mm -hmm. who finds themselves in this situation mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. or who been through mm -hmm. what you've been through, mm -hmm. but was not able to get out of it to where they can laugh about it. Mm -hmm. They can joke about it mm -hmm. and they can say, Jesus mm -hmm. brought me through. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you can tell them at this moment where they find themselves to be able to get out mm -hmm. of it? I would say that the same way Jesus brought me through is the same way Jesus can bring you through. Number one thing, you can never, ever stop believing. Now, don't get me wrong. I do understand there's those times where you lose hope a little bit. You know, you're standing, you're strong, and then you get weak in, uh, weak in the knees. I completely understand. But you never lose hope. You keep praising and worshiping. It doesn't even matter if you have a good voice or not. And when nobody believes you, child, sis, whoever you may be, Jesus believes in you. That's why you're here, because of a purpose that he has for you, not because the purpose the world has for you and now it doesn't matter what you did in the midst of all of this because he's going to take all your mess and completely turn around for the good mm -hmm. so don't even worry about that what are they going to say what are they going to you know they, they know about my past and all of that all your past will be erased because he's going to put you in a new robe and it's going to be completely white no one's going to see your mistakes and your flaws because all they see when they encounter you is him yes. mm -hmm. yes. that's what i would say to him no and you're able to graduate from college yes you have a degree a bachelor's degree right i'm working on my bachelor's degree yeah. i got my associate at yeah. a community college yes. and i'm working on a bachelor's degree in social work and you did not stop. You did not let your childhood or your past stop you. Mm -hmm. You did not let the fact that they confined you, they gave you a name, they gave you a title, keep you down. You did not remain a victim. Right. Oh, no. No, you can't do that. And how, how were you, how did you keep that strength? I know Christ did it. Mm -hmm. Were there other people around that came and reached out to you? Most definitely. Were there other people that invested in helping you out of this? Too many people. Wow. Too what was that people. experience like? Um, a lot of the times when people try to come in to help, mm -hmm. I would kind of like shun them away because it's like, you know, no one knows what I've been through, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no one knows my story. But at the end of the day, um, I feel like God will position these people right. in different parts and aspects of my life. At this age, I had someone. At that age, I'll have another person. Person. And some of them are like, like, like white folks, American. I don't even know them from anywhere, but right. they, they encounter me and they speak into my life and they touch me and they're not afraid to hold my hand and let's walk through this together mm -hmm. for however long God needs you to be in my life. Mm -hmm. So I definitely had, uh, and still have lots of strong pillars mm -hmm. surrounding me. Oh, wow. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what would you say to families? It could be yours. It could be any other family mm -hmm. that find themselves in a situation where there is a child mm -hmm. that has been treated in a certain way. Mm -hmm. Those who don't know, mm -hmm. what was one thing that you would have expected from family that weren't directly related to you, mm -hmm. that heard about these stories, that knew about these stories? What were you expecting from them at the mm -hmm. time? What would you tell them that they should do? Mm -hmm. I would definitely say there's always a two story to everything. Mm -hmm. So listen to the other person's story. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, did you go seek this information from God? Mm -hmm. Or was it just, I heard him say, I heard her say, and since they're a man or a woman of God, you don't question. The only person we should not question is God. Right. Anybody else that's breathing just like me and you, you can question God about whatever they say mm -hmm. because God will give you the full truth. Mm -hmm. I've had people that I've never told my story about. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll come to me and they say, hey, I had a dream and God showed me that everything you went through is a lie. They put that on you mm -hmm. and they'll be crying right there in front of me. And I'm just sitting there like, uh, OK, mm -hmm. 20 years later. Right. But God reveals that if you want to know, if you're eager, if you really care about that person, the way you're saying, I say, go seek God for yourself. Right. Go, go ask God, get on your knees. He answers. Right. He answers. Right. Yeah. How has this better your relationship with your husband? You're married now mm -hmm. and you have two kids. Yes. How does you as a mother, how did this influence it? How does it influence it as a wife? How mm. does it influence it as a sister? Now that you're able to get out mm. of it. I feel that this caused me to be very passionate about the people that I love. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
every day it's not happy go jolly yeah. but there's that passionate love that nobody can take away from me because if I call you family I'm gonna love you yeah. right I'm gonna love you that no one can come from the outside and say this that will change my perspective about you or my love for you right. I really just try to replicate what I feel like the type of love Jesus gave me through all this time mm -hmm. and I try to replicate that you know outward Wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. So we're at the end of our show, Sarah, um, and I want you to give a message to everyone mm -hmm. watching out there. This is not a, this is not even half of the story. Right. I just wanted to get this out so that we can share a testimony of mm -hmm. things that God can do. Right. Because you reconciled with your family. Yes. You see them, mm -hmm. they spend time with you and yes. your kids. Mm -hmm. Everything is good because yes. God can restore. Amen to it that. wasn't their fault. Mm -hmm. Also, mm -hmm. at that time, they didn't know any better. Right. But now they do. Mm -hmm. What is something that you can tell the world about your story, your testimony, a message that you wanted to give out? And where they can come and find you if they want to know more. Mm. Let the people know. I would say that um, you're created for a reason. God has you here for a reason. Don't let the devil change your identity or make you believe that where you're going through or what you've been through is your true identity. That is not your true identity. You are whatever, whoever God says you are. And so you hold on to those promises and he's going to see you through. Um, if you're looking to find me, you can find me on my YouTube channel and it's titled Sarah Maweishi. You can find me on Instagram, the same name, Maweishi is what I go by. Um, and that's pretty much it. Even on Facebook, it's the same thing, Sarah Maweishi. Um, on YouTube channel, I'm pretty much talking about the same thing, testimonies of my life. Sometimes we might touch on hair or whatnot, but it's the whole lifestyle of a woman. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, Sarah, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Happy to be I'm here. beyond touched. Mm -hmm. I, and I continue to be emotional because I'm like, <sighs> I thought I had it bad, right? <laughs> you never Everyone know what people story. are going through. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. But what I love about my show and you is the fact that we don't remain victims. Mm -hmm. God allows this so that we can be able to help other yes. people out there. Yes. I'm grateful that you trusted mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. to be in, to talk to me about this mm -hmm. and to go public about this because people can can take it any other way. That's true. And I'm so glad that you guys are here with us. Excuse my emotions, but this is such a powerful testimony. My goodness, it touches me of what Jesus can do. Mm -hmm. Guys, God mm -hmm. is faithful. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you've been through. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what hell broke in your life. Right. The God that we serve, mm -hmm. he can bring you out of this mm -hmm. and connect you back with the same people that put you through this. And this is what love is. God will teach you how to love even your enemies. Amen. That's what the Bible says. So for anybody who's going through the situation, you found yourself in the same situation as Sarah, do not give up. You are not a victim. You are a child of God and mm -hmm. he loves you. And he loves you enough to get you out of there. Mm -hmm. Come back to him. Amen. He will save you. Thank you guys for watching. I am your emotional host, <laughs> Grace Kipasa. I am so excited to have you guys here in, in between season three. Until next time, we will see you guys. Sarah, can you close us out with a little more of your worships, your voice? I want to hear it again. Do, do you have any song in mind? Uh, the song that you sang before we the were on. Yes, okay, I okay. want you to sing that song um, again. <laughs> thank you, Lord, hallelujah. You've been so good to me. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. I'm grateful for my blessings. I'm grateful for my struggles, drowsing tribulations I've been through. I realize that no one can love like you do. Thank you so much, Sarah. Until You're next welcome. time, in between, <laughs> I am your host, Grace Kipasa. We'll see you guys next time. Oh.